And the next talk is, uh, we, have, uh, we welcome Anselm Cruz with the topic of post-mortem debugging with heap dumps. Welcome. Oh, hello, everybody. So uh, it's probably a well-known problem that every CS program is buggy. Um, and there are various methods to handle it. And my talk is about post-mortem debugging for Python. Just uh, very short, I'm working for science and computing. And I'm a senior uh, software architect there. And in my spare time, I'm do some Python hacks, yes. So, um, some program failures are, occur very infrequently, and they are sometimes also hard to reproduce, and um, think of a large uh, compute cluster where once a day a job dies, and uh, you have no access to these jobs. And in this case, it's usually a very common approach and a very old approach to use um, some kind of post-mortem analysis uh, to find the cause of, the, of a failure. Um, the classical approach is to create a core dump. And the core dump is a file, and you can later load it in the debugger and analyze it. And while, unfortunately, Python has no uh, usable core dumps yet. So I thought that could be a chance for a little project. And uh, when I started, I didn't know whether it would work out. But uh, well, actually, it works to some kind. So uh, there's a lot of previous work. And core dumps date back into the origins of computers. So the oldest uh, the reference I found to the classical core dumps is in the uh, programmer's manual for the share operating system from 1959. That's the uh, second operating system ever created, so it's really old. And uh, today almost every uh, operating system has a feature to create a dump of uh, the memory of a program that caused some fault conditions. Um, people have used this operating level dumps um, to analyze interpreted languages and uh, interpreted programs running within an op uh, a native code interpreter. And so in, in, in the internet, you can find various uh, reports of people trying this for Python. And they had mixed results, uh, a few projects. And I think I got most of them. Um, you can find it in the reference section. Actually, it's complicated and highly dependent on the implementation and the compiler options and the compiler version and the operating system. And so it's not really practicable. Then uh, it's, of course, possible to move this idea, uh, to, to move the feature to create a dump from the operating system into the interpreter. And there are some reports about uh, dump features for interpreted languages, and the most prominent example is probably Java. The, um, uh, the IBM implementation of Java directly uh, supports some kind of Java heap dumps, and you can later uh, debug the uh, Java program. Well, for Python, there's also some ongoing work in uh, two 2012, Elifina released the uh, PyDump module. Um, its idea is to catch an exception, pick the trace back, and then use the PDB postmortem function to analyze the unpicked trace back. And this, in theory, this works well, but um, in practice, um, most serious trace back contains some unpickable objects. And, uh, well, it's files with some pickling error. <laughs> and now we come to PyHeapDump, that's the module I created. Um, the name PyDump was already used, so I had to choose a different one. And uh, I used PyHeapDump. It's an still experimental work. It's currently 2.7 only. 
um, because uh, SPICL library I depend on is 2.7, but uh, it's possible to port it, and there's also an experimental port of this SPICL library. So if it matches, we will get it for Python 3. The building blocks um, and the basic idea is similar uh, as with PyDump. Um, some exception handling code and some separation of the dump and glue code to, uh, to insert the dump into the debugger. And uh, indeed, I used uh, a few lines of code from uh, Elifina's PyDump module because uh, when I found it, I said, well, perhaps I can improve it. It turned out to be um, uh, there are just a few lines left. Yes. So it's time for a little demonstration. Uh, think of the following situation. You installed a little uh, Python game for a, a partner or your kids or a customer, or, and, and then the, uh, she or he complains about some, inc or some crashes occurring every now and then, and you have to catch the bug now. Um, and please note, I used the uh, game block fortress and I introduced the bug, so the upstream version is perfectly okay. <laughs> and here we are. So, um, so first, you know, uh, we, we have to uh, uh, instrument our Python installation to create the dumps. So, um, it's as simple as a pip install per heap dump. It's already installed. I didn't want to depend on the network, yes. Then I uh, created a little uh, a PTH script. Uh, here is it um, in the Python installation. It just, you know about what this kind of files do, uh, how they work. Uh, uh, if uh, Python finds uh, during startup a file with extension uh, PTH in its side packages uh, directory, it's, uh, well, let's say it, include, uh, it, it executes this file in some sense, yes. So we, um, so it imports a, a PyHeap dump package and then registers uh, uh, un dump on unhandled exception handler, it's registered, registered with this, uh, this exception hook. Uh, so, let's play the game. Uh, should be, should work out, yes. Okay, so, um, I have tried a little bit to find a solution where the game reliable crashes, and here is the crash. And we got a message uh, <coughs> that we have here an, an, an a heap dump file. That's fine, so we can now uh, load this into the debugger. It's fairly simple. Um, there's a, um, we simply uh, call Python uh, minus m per heap dump, and there's a uh, nice help option, so you can have some arguments. Um, the idea is simply to uh, tell the Python well, um, what file to uh, debug, and I want to use the uh, uh, PyDev debugger that is included. Uh, uh, so it's a debugger for the Eclipse PyDev module, and it has a nice remote debugging feature, and therefore it's very well suited for this here, for this application. And I have to uh, tell Python where the debugger module is actually located. This is a long line here, yes. So let's debug it. Um, So, and then I have to go to the debugger, yes, and you see um, here we have a message, the debugger uh, shows me the exception that was called, and while hmm, attribute error, ball object has no attribute at bonus, obviously that's a reason for the crash, um, but we could all still ask why uh, did it happen? So. 
We have, uh, can you read it, uh, think and? Yes, should be possible. So you see here there are some more or less complicated uh, conditions when this add bonus method is called. And so we can look into the variables and we see here, um, for instance, solve. So here are all the values you will need. Yes. And we can find, uh, okay, the, the combo length is 14, that's, that's true, and some other values, yes. And this complicated condition is the cause why the crash is occurring only rarely. Fine. Actually, I introduced this code here. You see, we can also look at other frames, and we get all the variables, and we can uh, for instance, here, look into the, uh, oh, there's an interesting thing. Uh, we can look in the uh, objects, and here we have an interesting uh, object, because the um, game object was actually not really uh, unpickable. For some reasons, it depends probably on some resources or something like that, so we get an um, surrogate object instant. Yeah. And so it doesn't uh, hinder debugging because the surrogate objects inserted by the unpickler, by the fault tolerant unpickler of the bar heap dump module uh, has all the attributes the original object would have. So we are still able to analyze the problem. Okay, so far the demonstration. And back to the presentation. Um, so the application of the high pi heap dump um, module is very simple. Yeah? You have to set up some an exception handler. You have the various ways to do it. So usually uh, the most common and comfortable way is the, um, the function dump on unhandled exceptions, and it can register an sys uh, accept hook. Uh, uh, that's an in the sys module. There's a hook to uh, that's called if an unhandled exception occurs in the main thread. Yes, or it can work as an um, decorator for a function. So. Uh, if this function raises an exception, it will be called as. And there are also some low-level functions available. It's documented in the uh, manual of Pahit dump. Then you have to instruct your customer or the operator to send you any uh, heap dump files, yes? And then you have to wait, and if you have good luck, you have to wait forever because your program is not buggy. <laughs> And finally, you analyze it using a common debugger. So how does this, uh, all this work? Yes, we have, um, that's a complicated question, so let's divide it into some simpler questions. And the first question is, what is the content, the information in a heap dump file? Let's have a quick, oh, I have to finish debugging here. So, simply finish. So, actually the, uh, the file is an, a, a kind of MIME message format. Yes? And uh, the idea was to make a file that a human could read to some degree and to, uh, so it contains some headers with uh, information about the Python process that created the file. And then there's a large binary part, uh, and it contains the real information. So, what is in this binary blob? 
it's a content of a comp uh, the content is a compressed pickle of a dictionary and the dictionary contains um, traceback the traceback of the exception stack frames of selected or all Python threads or in case of uh, stackless Python of all uh, tasklets and then the transitive closure of the objects reachable from the frames or tasklets. And optionally, you can also include the sources uh, of the code objects from all these frames. And uh, some other interesting objects like the process ID, the uh, pass module, because um, if you uh, create a dump, for instance, on a, a Linux system and analyze it on a Mac system or on a Windows system, you, uh, you sometimes need to know how to interpret the passes and the, and the file names of the source code files in the code objects and so you need to pass. Then, uh, and thread IDs and things like that. How does Pyheap dump create this content? Well, the basic idea is uh, very simple, create a, a dictionary with the content and pickle it. And there's a challenge, you, uh, you can't pickle uh, almost uh, all classes, yes, uh, the kind of data that is pickleable in Python is fairly limited, yes, yeah? those typical data objects and objects designed to be pickled, yes, but surely not everything. And the second challenge is multi-threading, because uh, think of several threads uh, running at the same time and changing the state of your program. And if you have an exception, it could depend on the states, not only of the uh, threads that actually had the exception, but also on other threads. So, how do we, how can we pickle arbitrary objects? Yes, you probably all know a little bit about pickling, and uh, pickling is, on one hand, it's a data format. Yes, you can read the exact description of all these little opcodes and uh, details in the um, source of uh, the CPython library. And there's also standard implementation, yes, such as the pickle or the C pickle modules. The basic idea of the standard implementation is to serialize data in a portable way, portable between different Python versions. And it's really fast. Well, there's a second implementation uh, of the pickle, uh, of the pickler, the S-Pickle module. Um, Science and Computing created and released to the open source in uh, 2010. And uh, the idea of this module is to serialize uh, well-behaved objects, but uh, not between uh, Python versions, between different Python versions. It's, fairly slow because it's uh, written entirely in Python. And PyHeap dump builds on this S-Pickle library and adds some additional features. And uh, the important feature is a fault tolerant uh, pickling and unpickling. The basic idea is we, um, we are not required to um, serialize and restore the data in an exact way, yes, because we are um, not interested in, uh, continue to, uh, in continuing uh, the program. We just want to look at its state. So it's enough to preserve the state in a way that is useful for analysis, but uh, that's all we need. So we can, um, we have enough additional freedom to handle problematic objects. So, um, the second challenge, multi-threading, yes, that's, that's no pro uh, perfect solution possible. So it would be, um, in an ideal world, uh, we would have a method to uh, stop all other frames, write our uh, pickle, and, or create the pickle at least, yes, and then, uh, let everything uh, go on, yes. But uh, we can make some best effort solution and it's indeed possible to block other threads as long as you don't release the kill. Yeah, that's a set uh, check interval 
function and if you set it to a very long interval, um, or in Stackless Python you could use an atom the atomic context manager, um, then, you, then you effectively block other threads. And then you can um, block these threads, make a copy of all the local variables of the frames you're interested in. So, and then uh, you can actually pickle uh, this uh, copied frame objects. Um, pickling it by itself could, co uh, could release the gill uh, because uh, if you pickle a class that has a uh, custom reduce or uh, custom get state method or something like that, it, this method could actually make a call to an uh, external C uh, function and it could release, uh, and that would release the gill and then you get all the methods. So, um, short note, final note about the debugger support. Um, PDB and PyDevD already support post-mortem debugging. Um, PDB has a nice API method uh, named post-mortem. Um, in PyDev, you uh, need to oh, hack a little bit around in the internals. Um, PyDev supports the inspection of additional uh, stack frames that, that as a, uh, which do not belong to a thread, so-called custom frames, and that's a really useful feature here, because if you have multiple threads, then we can use these custom frames to uh, make uh, it's very simple to access uh, the, non, the other threads besides, uh, that didn't, uh, besides the threads that uh, Cost exception. Yes, and PyDev should probably add some API for advanced debugger features like this post mortem debugging or adding custom frames, print to the debugger console. It has all these features, but it's they're not accessible. Future goals. Well, actually, at the moment, it is useful. We have uh, already we are using uh, PyHeap dump in our, one of our products, um, but we, uh, up to now, we got just very few uh, dumps that were caused by real, by real bugs. Uh, that's probably uh, due to the uh, testing and quality assurance <laughs> we, we have for this product. So uh, just very few bugs. And there are open questions, the memory usage, uh, how reliable is this concept? And very, very important security, yes. Uh, this dump files contain an uh, enormous amount of information. So uh, probably you have to handle them carefully. And as always, if you pick it, or especially unpick it something, yes, you're running uh, code. Yes, pickle uh, file is a program, so you have to be sure that uh, you can trust uh, the source of this code. Yes, and probably um, I'll ask Fabio uh, to provide some better APIs for PyDFD, and um, in the long term, I plan to support Python three. Probably not every version, but. Uh, 3.3 or 3.4 and ongoing. So, then uh, thanks to my boss, uh, he approved the publication of this code and my colleague Tanya for testing and my uh, wife Esther for a lot of patience and many hours in the evening when I did some of this. And here are the references. Um, probably the slides will be available somewhere. So many thanks for your kind attention, and I think we have another two minutes for questions. So if there are questions, please go. To, oh, take this microphone. It's okay. Uh, thanks for the great effort you've done. And uh, the question is. Uh, that's my probably only my uh, impression that it's, it kind of doubles the uh, efforts done uh, for a Sentry project because 
Actually, uh, what you could do is to extend a bit uh, their reporting of the exception to include also other threats if it's needed, actually. Because most of the time, what you need is just a traceback, right? With uh, local variables and some of, uh, source code to understand the problem. But uh, core dump is a bit uh, of overhead most of the time. And basically, for uh, most of the projects, you just need to uh, report into the Sentry server of an exception, and you can cover like most of bugs. Is that, do you agree with that? Or? Yes, and uh, uh, it, in PyHeap dump, it's also uh, possible. Uh, it didn't show it to uh, limit the uh, information that included to just a uh, uh, local thread. And uh, it really depends on your application what you need, yes. And there are also other solutions like look at, at Django or something like that where you get a very nice. Um, uh, the thing is that the center you see is any exception, so it doesn't matter. It can be any application. That's yeah. it. So it just needs some uh, implant machine or it's component. It can be like local server. It's just it's relaxed the exception. Yeah, 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 yes, that's, that's, that's surely possible, but uh, it depends on the infrastructure and the situation you have, yes. Okay, we're running out of time. We have a group photo afterwards. Please join us outside. Thank you very much, Anselm, for the presentation. Thank you.